we will begin our review by talking about fractions. You begin teaching fractions by taking something which represents a whole and dividing it into some number of equal parts. So in this case, uh, the rectangles in the middle, we've divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. And the second one we've divided into 10 parts. Then we do something with those parts. For example, we color them red. Uh, we color them blue. And then we write a number, the number of, of red squares or referenced parts, over the number of equal parts altogether. So for example, we can say that on the rectangle here on top, the number of red squares is 3 and the total number of squares is 8. On the rectangle on the bottom here, we can say that the number of red squares is 1 and the total number of squares is 10. So 1 out of 10 is red. We can use fraction pieces to do a number of explorations about fractions, including finding equivalent fractions. <clears throat> to find equivalent fractions, you take the fraction piece that you want to work with, say one-third, and what other pieces are equivalent or the same as one-third. You can see that two-sixths is the same as one-third. And uh, you can also see that four-twelfths is the same as one-third. Uh, you can do this with almost any of the pieces. One-fourth, for example, was the same as one-fourth. Well, we can see that two-eighths is the same as one-fourth. And 3 twelfths is the same as 1 fourth. You can also do addition and subtraction of fractions. In order to add fractions, for example, 1 third plus 1 fourth, well, you just put them together and you see what do they add up to in terms of where they come up to according to the other fractions. Where do they come up to? So we can see that one third plus one fourth come up to right over here in terms of twelfths. Oops, a little further up. They come up to right over here in terms of twelfths. So we can say they add up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 twelfths. This brings us to the, of the, to the idea of common denominators. Uh, common denominators, a common denom denominator occurs, uh, you find the common denominator between two fractions by finding all the pieces that fit into both of these both the one-third and the one-fourth. And one of the things... So to, to add fractions, we saw that you just bring them together. To subtract fractions, you put one on top of the other. So one-fourth minus one-fourth minus one-third is this piece that's left over here. And what piece is that? Well, whatever you fit in there, and we can see that the piece that fits in there is the twelfth piece. Common denominators are pieces that fit into both. So what fits both into one-third and one-fourth? Well, we can see the twelfths fit into both of them, so we can replace the one-third with the twelfths. And also the other piece that fits into both of them, well, that's the only one, I guess, that fits into both uh, as far as these go. You can also use cues and ear rods to teach about fractions. Using cues in the rods, you notice that all the rods are different color and they're also a different length. You can choose any of these rods to represent one whole. For example, su suppose we assume that the dark green is one whole. 
All the rods that line up into it or fit into the dark green are parts of that hole. So the greens, the light green is part of the hole, it's a half. The, the reds are a third and the whites are a sixth. There are other ones. Each other one is some fraction. For example, uh, the violet is in fact two reds or it represents two thirds. The yellow represents five whites or five sixths. As an example of a problem that we did for homework, in terms of the rods, what's the common denominator between one half and one third? In terms of the rods means what color rod? What color rods fit into both the one half and the one third piece? So here's the one half, that's the black piece. The one third is the violet piece up here. Well, what other rod fits into both of them? Well, we can see that orange fits into the half. Three oranges fit into the half, and two oranges fit into the one-third. Is there any other? Yes, green is another one. We see that six greens fit into the one-half, and that four greens fit into the one-third. So the common rods between those are green and orange. Multiplication of rods by using cuisinier rods is done a similar way. If you have a multiplication problem, you replace the word, the time sign with the word of, and then you try to take a part of a rod. For example, one half times one fifth is the same as one half of one fifth. So if you take one fifth, which is the red piece, and you take half of it, you can see half of the red piece is the white piece which is one-tenth of the whole. One-half of two-fifths, well, we can see two-fifths is the violet piece. And one-half of that is a red piece. So the red piece equals, and the red piece equals one-fifth of the whole. So using this method, one half times two fifths equals one fifth. How about one half times four fifths? Well, four fifths is the same as this brown rod is four fifths. One half of that would be, you can, as you can see here, two oranges. This would be one half of the brown rod. It's the same as two oranges. Each orange is one-fifth, so this would be the same as two-fifths. So here's another example. One-half times one-third is the same as one-half of one-third. So here we have one-third, which is the red rod. We take half of the red rod. We cut it in half. We get the white rod, which is one-sixth of the whole. So here's another problem for you to try. One half times one six can be stated as it'll be. Don't forget, re replace the, the time sign with the word of. And the second fraction with the fr the, the color of, which is that fraction. So which color? Which fraction is one sixth? And that is the orange, is one sixth. So this can be represented as one half of orange, one half of orange.
division can be solved by using the definition of division, which is multiple subtraction, or how many of the one fit into the other. For example, one half divided by one third means how many one fourths fit into one half. Uh, sorry, one half divided by one fourth means how many one halves one fourths fit into one half. So you can see that, or children can see that, that if you have one half, this is the one fourth. How many one fourths can you put in there? You, get, you see one, and then you could put another one in. So two. The answer is two of these. Let's see this one. Two-thirds divided by one-twelfth. How many one-twelfths fit into two-thirds? So here's one-third, and you need four, and then you're going to need four more for the other third. So you can see answer is 8. Two-thirds divided by one-sixth means how many one-sixths fit into two-thirds. Well, let's take away the twelfths we had there before. And now we're going to do the same thing with the one-sixth. How many one-sixths fit into two-thirds? So you can see one, two, three, four. The answer is four. Five six divided by one twelfth means how many one twelfths fit into five six. So here's six. Five six is all the way up to here. So how many twelfths will go fit in there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten.